could you tell us about the book and uh, yeah. sort of uh, introduce to women why they why they would want to buy it? Um, yeah, sure. Well, something I've tried to do as a writer over many years is to document the lived experiences of women, the personal narratives of of women, and particularly stories that haven't been told, haven't had the attention they they warrant. And it seemed to me the time had come for a collection of stories uh, from women on the lived experience of it being in a relationship with a habitual porn consuming male who won't change, doesn't want to change. And it really came about when at the end of last year, I shared a post about a young woman in her early 20s who just called off her wedding the same week she discovered that her fiance was a compulsive porn user. And women started responding and saying, well, I wish I'd called off my wedding. I wish I'd heard the advice, don't date men who use porn. I wish I'd seen the warning signs. I wish I'd seen the red flags. And I thought, I think there's a book. I think there's a collection here because the stories just kept coming. So I, I started contacting the women who had, were commenting all over my social media pages and invited them to contribute. And, and 25 did. Well, I had more than 25, but I, I published 25 because I wanted to really show an inside view of well, what it is, what is, what is it like? What it, is it like that the man would prefer porn to her or, you know, demand um, vile, degrading, depersonalizing, dehumanizing sex acts or a demand that she consume porn with him or demand that she be filmed to make their own homemade porn? What, what does that feel like? You know, what is it like to sort of sacrifice yourself uh, to a habitual porn user? And should you have to do that? For some women, they were just completely ignored by their partner because she couldn't compete with what he found online. So she ends up abandoned, you know, neglected. And yeah, they're the stories I wanted to tell. One is a warning to younger women, don't date men who use porn. And secondly, a sort of as a permission giving collection saying, you know, you shouldn't have to endure this because some of these women were waiting 20, 30 years for him to change. They felt they couldn't, you know, break the marriage. They had to support him. They had to be there for him. It would be wrong of them. And of course, they've got an entire therapeutic industry telling them that it's her fault, not his. She's hung up about sex. This is what all men do. And she should service him at his every demand. And so it was really to say to those women, look, you don't have to live a half life. You, you shouldn't have to um, completely sacrifice yourself for this man who really does not care for you. Uh, you shouldn't have to put up with uh, his entitlement, uh, his really young women are being groomed to accept sexual assault uh, by men who don't value their full humanity. And uh, so really it was, you know, to help those women to see that they should be allowed to, to exit and not put up with the emotional and psychological abuse, which so many have. 